My name's Madison McKibben. And I'm Jeremy Casebeer. And we're going to walk you through a match. Back in 2018, Riley and I played Casebeer and Fenoy on Friday in Hermosa Beach. It was a first round of the losers. What Third match of the day. Third match of the day that he likes to say. And so we're going to walk you through the third and final set. Campbell went to three. Should have got done two, but. Should have been. Should have been. They played, they played really, really well. So what we're going to do is we're going to walk you through kind of the strategy of what we were thinking, what was going on, why we kind of did the things that we did to ultimately win or lose that match, depending if you've seen that or not. So what happened in set one for you guys? Uh, like, like Set one went well. Um, Fenoy sighed out like a god. Uh, we served all right. And I think the biggest thing was just we served a little bit better than you guys, and you guys made a bunch of errors. Yeah. First set was not very good for us. Like, we didn't know much about Fenoy going into it, and so we started off just blocking line and seeing what he could do. His high line was unreal. Went to it a bunch of times. And we tried to serve him more more middle, but he passed. He got outside. He had his, his angles to hit, and we were like, okay. So it took us, like, this first set to really figure him out. And also, when you play a team where you think there's a weaker player, I'm not saying Fenoy is weaker than Casebeer, but – in this situation third match of the day third match of the day yeah he was struggling so like when you get in that position sometimes you've just you're just like get that servant just just pop it into him you're not thinking about like moving him you're trying to bring him middle but at times just like i'm just gonna put it in and we ended up serving like way too soft way too soft you could side out we're like okay so we slowly increased like the intensity of our serving which helped us out tremendously let's get to this third set and we'll tell you uh the adjustments we made to uh, a, hopefully I'm win. So excited about this. Well, I think we've talked about it so many times already in this match, and that's the chess game that's happening with the attack from Riley McKibben. Is he going to go with that wrist away, or is he going to find success down the line? And how fast can he figure that and out? And I've got I this strong belief that if you ever get two block touches in a single point, you uh -huh. never get the third. You never get the third. Never. So why don't you just drop? That's a good question. <laughs> I probably should have. <laughs> All right, so right here, like, they put over a free ball. I see them both coming back, getting into defensive position. And so for me, when I see that, I pass it kind of low, and I run quick to the pin because, for one, it's hard for the blocker to get there, especially in Hermosa Sand. And then for the defender, if they're running anything, they're not set. So they're going to commit early to one thing or the other, which will open up more options for me. But that's that's my preference. A lot of people just go high, you know, higher – Higher so set, more consistency, but... That's what you see a lot of the international teams do, too. But it's interesting because in the Hermosa Sand, it's kind of risk-reward. On a free ball in system, like, it's golden, but I've definitely had times where I forced it out of system, you know? Yeah. And in the deep sand, you kind of slow yourself down. Yeah, uh, it's it's basically like a low margin, or a high margin of risk. Sure. Because the set it needs to be there. Like that. Yeah. So this is like... This is what it looks like when you're uncomfortable on your opposite would, side setting. Go up low and go up second, press late. Yeah, you never would touch the ball. I've been right over the top. Yeah. I usually won them. <laughs> we Double contact forward. call there. Fanoi has a perfect pass. I come in a little early. Oh, you were early in there. I was early to the set, which is something I didn't start thinking about until, I don't know, the last year or two playing. But uh -huh. you can also be, just like you can be early to hit, you can be early to set. So I was like kind of in there already waiting and just not really knowing the yeah. spacing on the right. I think when you're there and you're just waiting for the set, you just have no momentum. You have exactly. to like regenerate that momentum to set the it's ball. It's awkward. There's no timing. I mean, you talk about like you being too early. Like I like looking at Fanoi in this and just looking at his footwork, like, Pass, get back, wait. Oh, he's on point. Dude, it was gnarly. Like, his his footwork and the way he gets out and makes angles for himself is, like, something that most people should watch. And if you watch a lot more of his stuff, he did a really good job. Today, out on the sand, showed off a little bit, played a fun game. Oh, yeah, I can't wait for that to come out. <laughs> Another nice defensive move. McKibben's battling. What a play. Okay. Okay. Let's Madison go. Had the let's two go. Best covers of his let's life. Go. That's, I mean, I'm good at match. that. I, I think we said this before, but first set, we were just serving easy. We just wanted to serve Fanoi. Yeah. Lots, and like, I can't tell you how many times that's like gotten us into trouble, even with teams that, that we should beat. Like, this, this is a good team, but like, when you play guys, you're like, oh, I should beat this guy. You're like, you just lollipop serves. 
And so finally, we we start being aggressive more at Fenoy. And this swing, I don't think he's hit a single ball lined. We're we're starting to run fours on him, and which is I jumping guess he's, around a lot more. Than yeah, running. Well, I we were keeping it traditional. I was blocking line and like letting him hit past me, and like that wasn't really working. So like this set, we finally switched things up, and we started running a lot more fours. And like when you run a four, and a guy just like turns and crushes line, you're like, oh my gosh, like how much vision does this guy? <laughs> how much vision does this guy have? So Riley makes a phenomenal dig. Dude, on- two things Madison will never do again in his life: cover okay. that block, and then was that, well, see, was that a jumbo? See, that, that's why jumbo? that's why I'm I'm ambidextrous. Sorry, joust here, <laughs> cover here, and, and dude, it's funny deep. for some reason I get into these positions where it's like I'm covering it, it's tight in transition, and I I'm not good at jumbos, but something comes over me, and I'm like, <laughs> feel I'm gonna go jumbo. <laughs> like there was a match, Most- there was a match against Nick and Phil, and it was to. It wasn't to win the match, but I tried to jumbo Nick. He dug it. And then I tried to jumbo Phil <laughs> in the same set. Same set. I was like, what What, what most, was I thinking? It's the most disrespectful shot in baseball. Ever. Well, it's also like you're not even thinking about it mid-rally. Oh, I think about like, it. Like, I'm not even thinking about it. I, my five jumbos a year are like thought out well before the serve. I'm like, this is a jumbo. <laughs> Boy, it's absolutely predetermined. <laughs> Okay, we and we watched the second game. Tell me a little bit why uh, serving from the middle. So this match, I moved around quite a bit. I started in the middle, and from there, it's nice because if you're going from the middle, the shortest distance the ball has to travel is to the middle. So that means it gets on the servers fastest, and that's the hubby wife play, which causes a lot of disruption. And the other nice thing about serving from the middle is when you're serving from the middle, you're served from right to left or to the right sider, this way, cross body, and wrist away to the left sider's line looks pretty similar. Mm -hmm. Versus if you're serving from the left side or the right side, you show it really early and it's really obvious and the ball has to travel further distance to get there, so it's easier to read and the passer has more time to get there. Picks up another. Okay, so that that play definitely not a great pass by Riley, and he stayed in the middle. I pushed that set way too far. Should have been more up and down. It like didn't didn't have an apex, so it's harder for Riley to track. It drifted out. He didn't get his feet there, and I mean it was a well formed block by Casper, mm-hmm. especially where like the set was and where Riley's approach was. Like no, he started here, and the set went out. And like coming out as a left sider, like case ball drifted. So that's drifted. Like, it drifted because of me. But like as a blocker, it's like if I just take up this sure, this area, sure. you're you're done. So trying to keep that spacing and keeping that angle, so you still have it. But it, it was, it was more of a bad set by me. But that's one of the things that like I've tried to eliminate from my game. And like if I could go back in time and give myself one piece of advice for attacking, it's limit the number of times the ball drifts across your body if you're like in front of your head or off to the right a little bit you're golden Mm -hmm. that's where you want to be anytime it comes over here you're super limited and the block has complete advantage on you yeah Fenoy no jump serve here interesting he's had success with it trying to let his guy do work Uh at the net that ball's outside but Out that, of bounds. But that's a big time play from Jeremy Casebeer, though. So okay, th- that play we, we talked about Fenoy mixing up his serves, coming out of timeout. Like I think he'd been going short to Riley like a bit, and he got a he got an ace on Riley before like a high deep angle serve, which was gnarly, and he went straight back to that to start this off, which didn't play completely well. Well, actually, Riley moved his feet and was fine. Finally got a good touch. Your second best cover of your life. <laughs> Can we just admire that? Look at this cover. As MD would say, a little Sam Panther move. You went for your second jumbo. I did. Don't I, you that, jumbo that, that, twice? That, those are the ones. Those Don't are the ones you jumbo, you jumbo twice. I mean, if it's tight, I'm. You don't jumbo twice on my, the gold My medalist. feet aren't there. Like my feet aren't there. Like what am I? I could like poke it in the block, but like I'm still out here. I'm just gonna try and go deep corner. Hold on. So there's like, there's moments in matches that kind of like make or break the match, and this is for sure one of them. Do you know what happens? No, no, I don't. I, know I, 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 I don't. I don't know how that is. Based on the result of the match, I think you guys side out. But this is a critical Crowded play. Between they are on their feet in the end zone. Can they tie it at thirteen?
Fanoi in a perfect spot. Right down the middle, just long. Do you know what, what, what your defense against Riley was at that point? <laughs> Absolutely not. So I'm, <laughs> <laughs> I'm, at the, I'm at the antenna. Riley hits a high line. Fenoy gets a great dig. Oh, Fenoy's already cheat. Well, Fenoy looks Fenoy's like he's reading. reading. He's, he's reading. reading. He's, he's just reading. reading. Yeah. Scoops. I get a decent attack. Riley's sitting. Riley, what are you doing sitting dead middle of the court? And what am I doing hitting there? And then Riley gets a dig. I'm outside the court. I'm thinking just get up and get in front of him. Trying yeah. to take. Take court away. Oh, you do your little. I did my little shake and bake. I mean, I, I'm sure that works. Another... I'm sure it, it works against some people, but like, I'm not looking at that in transition. Not in transition. Uh, uh, the moral of the, the moral of this rally is, <laughs> and one thing that I learned uh, from Stein this year at UCLA, one good set is an antidote to a terrible rally. So broken play, bad dig bad hit whatever if it's off the net all it takes is one good set just like take your time with it like roll it up and just give your partner a chance i set fanoi like 15 feet off in transition at 13 12 in the third set and he i remember this play very clearly he hits it well and then he, he tried two jumbo inches out he, that was not a jumbo <laughs> that's not a jumbo he hits it two inches out because i give him a very marginal set and uh, you know we who's happy. getting served here we were happy <laughs> Riley will serve Fenoy. No, he will not. Oh! He goes for it, and K Spear pops it for the winner. <laughs> One hand. No way. That's why you're here on a Friday. No way. Ridiculous. So I saw Riley looking down the middle of this early, and I was like, no I way he did. Coming. There's no I knew way it was coming. Did. I'm like, I'm not going to go to just. That's such bullshit. Just right there. That's all I need. Okay, so, yeah, all right. Riley <laughs> lines up. Phenomenal serve. And, like, okay, for one, I wasn't exactly ready for, like, a bullet overpass by k Spear. But I'm also, to my defense, like, it came over so fast. Like, I've been in that situation. It comes over so fast. You risk, sure. like spraying it and i'm not sure at this worst. point i'm not sure at this point if this rule was allowed where you can go up with overpasses and push it which would have been a lot easier maybe I'm it was but i was doing that i i just so, i weird. i just gotten comfortable with it 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 makes overpassing like sure. a lot easier but like when it balls coming fast my arm isn't super fast so i'm not like oh boom i'm like oh shit well, like, especially if it's back behind you too like, yeah i've had that where i'm serving there's an overpass i'm running it up i've literally missed the ball because like, <laughs> the ball's behind you you don't want to hit it like there's and so that that one was frustrating because it was coming so fast i thought riley would be there for it seen it over of course he thought i was gonna hit it and like i will say like during the freeze your mindset your mindset completely changes sure uh and so like if there's something that's gonna just infest itself <laughs> during like this time of like critical focus and like determination and grit Just this was not the way that you wanted to deal with the first side out yes. during the freeze you're like riley's like riley's pissed at me <laughs> because we could have ended this match um so i was like uh oh i hope this doesn't like Change. completely shift mess yes yeah, completely shift <laughs> and it, it had the potential to do uh, to, to look at this huge grin riley's about to pump the ball. <laughs> Riley drop kicks it to the sideline, turns around, and goes back. I mean, understandably so. I mean, w would you have been ready for that? Sure. Oh, oh just out of the reach of the Lorax. Okay. Oh. Okay. Thoughts. 14-12. 14-12. I've had one ace in three sets. So you're bound for one. I'm like, this feels like a good time. <laughs> this feels like, hold on. One other thing, too, that I picked up from playing with Mare that I like a lot. He talked about the law of averages. So if you just play, like, a horrible set, you got blown out 21-10. Mm -hmm. But you know it's a team that is as good, of you, as good as you or you should be better. It's like, all right, we just played horrible volleyball. Mm -hmm. According to averages, we're extremely likely to play some good volleyball right now. Like, we just played horrible. We're more than likely to rebound up. I like that. Riley McKibben, can he convert? Yes, oh, he can. Oh, you see the, the line still moving. 
<laughs> All right, so we, we want to clarify, as Casey said at the start, this is the third game, or sorry, this is obviously the third game in this match, but it's also the third match of the day, and it's grueling. It's gnarly. And so, You're stalling. So, I'm stalling. Fanoi is stalling. I'm, so Casey, Can we just acknowledge I'm the only one not killed over here? Okay, okay. He's the only one not killed over here. Casey's at the net doing his glasses. Fanoi's fixing the lines. Riley and I are just blatantly, like, not trying to cover up anything. We're, we're keeled <laughs> over in the middle the of the court, bit. like, all right, let's just act like we're talking about game plans. But <laughs> the last one, serving Fenoy, I think we had the most success when we blocked four on him. Um, you had that so later, though. That was something. That, that, had that later. We, we never blocked four until – and what I mean by four is, like, standing on the line, dropping angle. I don't think we put that in until um, set two. Yeah. Um, because I, I don't know. I think it's it's always good to have an a, a plan and a B plan, and it just took us a lot longer to switch to that because, like, sometimes you have that A plan, and you're like, well, we're, we're, like, so close to it working out, and, sure. like, someone, you need an outside person to be like, no, let's switch it. Because sometimes as a blocker, you're like, oh, I'm that close. Or a defender, like, oh, I'm that close. You never switch it when you should. But, yeah, we did, and going into this last play, I think fours worked out the most, and so that's why we went with it video and then we will give you a preview during that tomorrow's action on Saturday match point are we done for the day yes we are seven blocks for Madison McKibben none bigger than that one the McKibben brothers will move on all right so thank you for watching hope you enjoyed the first installment of walking you through that match. You know, it's something you want to do, add a little bit more insight of what we were thinking, our strategies, but comment below if there's anything more specific you'd like us to talk about on the next time. We plan on doing this uh, a few more times. Also, if you want to see the entire full match of, of us playing, we have it on our YouTube channel. Click here to check it out. But Case Beer, thank you. All right, man. Thanks, dude. My pleasure. That was awesome. All right, we'll see you next time.